use language to make sense of ourselves and our experiences. It's through language that we name and describe the world, and we also use language to describe our own thoughts to ourselves. So it's both a way to make sense of the external world, but also our internal worlds as well. Language takes centre stage in the classroom. It's both the medium of delivery and the medium of development. So, for example, in a primary school literacy lesson, the teacher is both delivering the lesson through language and using the lesson to improve the language skills of the students with whom they're working. When it comes to modelling language, what we're trying to do is present students with a demonstration of what good language use looks like. And I would say that this extends in two particular directions. The first one is general language use. So this could be good grammar, this could be good construction of sentences, things like avoiding slang language and those sort of wider, more general elements. The second aspect is technical language. And we know that most subjects in the curriculum have their own vocabulary, their own set of keywords, of technical terms, which are relevant to that particular curriculum area. So when we're modelling language, we're both helping students to develop good language skills in a general sense, but also to develop good technical language skills specific to a certain subject area. Now at a primary level, it's going to mean the class teacher doing all of that, whereas at a secondary level, it's going to be compartmentalised because the division of labour means that different teachers will be delivering the technical language relevant to different subjects. But running throughout all of this, there's the same principle that modelling good language use means providing students with something they can borrow from, they can copy and they can imitate. So we're using exactly the same principles of modelling here as we are when we're modelling thinking, modelling new ideas, modelling processes. The key is that our focus is on language and we may actually draw students' attention to what we're doing as we're doing it. So, for example, we might say something like, listen to how I'm using the vocabulary, or compare how you've said that to how I'm now going to say it. What are the key differences you notice? The final point to mention is that not all of this has to be verbal, because, of course, in lots of classrooms, visual modelling of language is very, very much to the fore. We might see a word bank on the wall, or exemplar sentences, or key words dotted around the classroom, and students encouraged to use these. So you can have that combination. With that said, the predominant mode of communication in the classroom is verbal, so that is where the majority of modelling language is going to take place. Golden Nugget. Modelling language means consistently giving students a demonstration of what successful language use looks and sounds like.